everybody. It's Tim Pichot. It's December 4th, and welcome to episode 40 of the Liberty Advisor podcast. And man, what a tale of two days it's really been for the stock market. Yesterday, the market was up, uh, I think, a little over 500 points at one point. And then today, the Dow finished down nearly uh, 800 points. It was down 799 points. Let me just find this over here on Yahoo Finance. Other big losers of the day were the NASDAQ down 3.8%. Uh, Russell was down, uh, was at 4.4%. And the S&P was down 3.24. So just an all-around bloodbath. Also important to note that the 10-year uh, Treasury finished at 2.915%. So it is uh, very interesting that it is back below 3%. And yesterday, what was really strange is that you had people who were flooding into the stock market while simultaneously also going into the bond market. So there was a sign of optimism and pessimism going on at the same time. Which is going to be, which is a very, very weird move and something I pointed out today on Ernest Hancock's uh, program. I was on there for about an hour, just finished with uh, World Alternative Media's Josh Segerson. I was very uh, excited to make my de debut on his show. Hopefully, uh, we'll see much more of him in the future. But anyways, I want to pivot on to China with what's going on right now. A lot of people were super optimistic yesterday with the trade deal that we saw. Uh, we, we came to an agreement to try to come to an agreement at a later point, a.k.a. nothing was really actually done with the Chinese and you know this really this crash has really been baking for so long right now in the oven that you know really the Fed was uh, in my opinion dumb enough to actually raise rates to the point where they've gotten themselves right now and really at this point it doesn't really even need any more rate hikes doesn't need any more bad trade deals bear markets don't look for reasons to go down and right now this crash that they've been baking and engineering for I mean they've been trying to avoid it but all acts of avoiding it is really just going to make it even worse when it eventually gets to the point where they can't control it so at this point this uh, recession or this uh, you know bear market is I mean recessions there's a technical definite of recession and they can do things to game it where technically you know the GDP could keep going up forever but uh, I'd rather say bear market rather than recession or at least seeing a decrease in standard of living uh, I think at the very at the very very least and really at the bottom uh, bottom line end of the day that doesn't really matter whether we have this uh, Chinese uh, trade agreement or not uh, I mean if these 25% tariffs were enacted that'd be like a Katie bar the door type event and probably like boom instant recession and this would really be uh, in my opinion a, like a ton of lead weights just being put on the, the back of this camel when really at this point this camel can't even uh, really handle the straws that it currently has let alone having having this being put on it so this is a major self-inflicted wound that we'd be putting on I mean I mean, personally, it's probably just a lot of bluster from the president to try to, you know, act really tough and try to act like he's doing something. And really, you've got so many people that uh, and what's really crazy about my life is that in the past six months, I've had a client leave me for being uh, too pro Trump. And then also another one leave me for not being uh, Trump enough. Whereas really what I'm trying to do is just call out the BS when I see it. I've supported him on numerous occasions, but I've also called him out. So, I mean, I'm sure you can go to the Liberty Advisor page right now and people calling me effing liberals. Uh, whereas at the same point, I've got people who are saying I'm too much of an extremist, which, uh, you know, would bring me to a quote from, um, was it from Barry Goldwater that said, liberty, uh, extremism in defense of liberty is no vice. And that is something that I absolutely believe in. And I don't have it up now, but I think the other part of that quote was uh, moderation in pursuit of justice is no virtue. And I could absolutely believe that 110%. Now, really, to me, this was the president BSing all the way all along. At the end of the day, a trade, a tariff is nothing more than an embargo that you place on yourself. And that's exactly what this is. It also reminds me of when Mike Tyson once said, everyone has a plan until I punch him in the face, except this time it would be us punching ourselves in the face. And really, you know, it's just absolutely crazy that anyone that thought that this was actually uh, going to go through in the first place, it would have, it, it, there's just no way. And, you know, what this did is we averted a, you know, the self-imposed punch in the face, the self-imposed embargo temporarily. And if you ask me, I mean, it's the Chinese who are getting the better end of this deal. I mean, yeah, there's IP infringement and yeah, there's, you know, they've got big tariffs on us, but I mean, we have all sorts of soy, soybean subsidies for our farmers. And, you know, we give, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars here and hundreds of billions of dollars there. So, I mean, Donald Trump really right now is someone that lives in a glass house 
and really shouldn't be throwing stones because we're doing some of the same things that we accuse the Chinese of. And okay, well, great. We want to impose a 25% tariff on them. Well, then how about all these manufacturing jobs that you're talking about coming back to America? You know, everything that they build one way, shape or another has to be pretty much imported before we add the value onto it, before we add these extra services onto it. And really the, the problem with trying to, you know, say, hey, I've got this, you know, big stick and that big stick is we're going to impose the tariffs. I mean, from the Chinese standpoint, I mean, most Chinese are already living in, you know, bad conditions. They're not, uh, you know, these spoiled rich Americans who are, you know, for most part, you know, half the country is on the dole, half the country can't even fend for themselves to begin with. And if the Chinese want to give us stuff that's subsidized and sell us stuff on the cheap and mainly stuff that we can't even afford to buy and we've, they've got to borrow or we have to give them treasury bills and bonds to begin with. So they give us real stuff. We give them fake crap. Uh, IOUs back in return, then we can't afford to pay those IOUs. So then we roll those IOUs over into another IOUs. And it was even Pence who said something to the effect of, you know, you guys are, uh, you know, currency manipulators and you guys are, uh, you know, predatory because what you're doing is you're lending money to countries who can't afford to pay it back. And what do you, so, okay, so what do you want to do, Mike Pence? Do you want to, you know, have China stop trading with America? And that would be your answer to this. And it's just, you know, a crazy set of circumstances. All of these are major headwinds that are going on. The biggest headwind, in my opinion, is the fact that right now the Federal Reserve is, is selling $600 billion of bonds every year. Typically, the biggest buyer was the Fed. Now they're the biggest seller. You got the Treasury has to issue over a trillion dollars of bonds this year. Now we're up to, let's call it 1.2. So add on the 600, we're at 1.8. Got about another trillion dollars worth of bonds that need to be rolled over. Now I've got, a, let's call it, you know, close to $3 trillion of bonds that need to be issued. Who the hell is going to be buying these bonds? It's a negative headwind when it comes to interest rates all the way along. The interest rates then are going to be rolled over, meaning that all these different companies who borrowed money on the cheap, most of the time this money was borrowed at short term. They had better rates when they could borrow money short term. Well, now they, there's, you know, almost, uh, I think I saw on Zero Hedge the other day, $1.6 trillion in corporate bonds that need to be rolled over in the next couple of years. And so now instead of paying, you know, 0.5%, now maybe you're paying, you know, three and a half, four 4%, which might not sound like a lot, especially some of the old timers out there who are going to say, hey, I remember paying 18%. Well, guess what? America didn't have a $20 trillion debt back then. America uh, and these corporations also didn't owe hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, you know, QGE, Q several of these other companies, uh, Q a huge amount of companies in the S&P 500 that basically are zombie companies that can't even afford to service their debt at these rates, let alone higher rates. All the headwinds are pointing to higher rates in the future. Uh, all this is, is bad news. And if you know we couldn't get our house in order when you know rates were low, we couldn't get our house in order when uh, you know essentially Obama just had a zero percent credit card this whole time. And if we can't expect deficits to go down underneath Republicans, if we can't expect uh, all these rates to go down underneath Republicans, then when do we expect them to go down? We gave Republicans everything. We gave them you know control of just about just about everything. And this is you know how they repay us. And so you know I know some people like to say, oh, well, you're just you know an effing Democrat for saying this stuff and other you know, Democrats, you know, think I'm uh, like Hitler. And so, you know, I know that I'm doing the right thing when I've got people who are mad at me from all ends of the spectrum. But real quickly, want to take a look at Donald Trump's Twitter feed. He said, I am a tariff man. When people or countries come in to raid the great wealth of our nation, I want them to pay the privilege of doing so. I mean, so let's just break down that. So you're allowed to raid us, but first you've got to pay us. So, you know, in the case of the Saudis, yeah, you know, you can murder a journalist. And, you know, obviously, you know, USA has murdered tons of journalists in the past, especially underneath Obama. Just if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up Michael Hastings. Uh, you know, this is a guy, a Rolling Stone reporter who was embedded into different wars, uh, was from accounts that I've heard of an incredibly brave man. He, called, he sent an email out to about a dozen of his friends and family members saying, I'm terrified right now. There's men in black vans who are chasing me. I'm about to drop a huge story. And he was driving his brand new Mercedes. And then, you know, they, he was driving this way. They found his engine, you know, hundreds of yards the other direction. They ruled it, you know, a simple accident when, uh, you know, here he is saying that, uh, you know, he was scared for his life. And meanwhile, he was like on the battlefield and wasn't even scared when he was out there. So, you know, you're allowed to, you know, screw over America. You know, you're allowed to finance, you know, 9-11. You're allowed to, you know, throw gays off buildings. But, you know, as long as you buy $300 billion worth of weapons for us, then we're all cool. You know, you got it. And so, I mean, at least Trump's being honest about it. I mean, this stuff has always gone on. Uh, so let me just kind of dissect the rest of this sentence here or uh, tweet. It will always be the best way to max out our economic power. Right now, we are taking in billions in tariffs, make America rich again. And now, 
how much, excuse my language, how much of a fucking idiot do you have to be right now to actually think that this is the way to make America rich again? So who pays the tariffs? It's we that pay the tariffs. So anyone that's taken basic economics 101, probably even Paul Krugman even knows this, and this guy doesn't know anything. But anytime you impose a tariff, you're imposing a tariff on yourself. So if we can say, oh, hey, the Chinese, you got a 25% tariff, uh, but really it's the Americans who are buying that stuff. Or what, are we going to all of a sudden start overnight to start making everything? I don't think so. Or, you know, and then what other trading, uh, other partners who are basically doing the same thing in China, they're going to flip it up overnight. I don't think so. This is all just bluster to act like a tough guy. You know, he's doing the exact opposite of, you know, Teddy Roosevelt, where, you know, we're acting like we've got a big stick and trying to hit everything where meanwhile, uh, you know, we do not have a big stick in this in this equation. It's going to come back to bite us big time. This is and this is not and the market going down is not about Donald Trump. I'm sure he's going to get the blame, but you could have elected Jesus and he would still not be able to avert what is, in my opinion, what is eventually coming. It's uh, bigger than any one person. And for anyone that's calling me, you know, a liberal for talking like this, well, then I would come back and say that you obviously didn't think Obama did didn't do that bad of a job because if you think one person can come in just unwind everything and this is more than just obama you have to go back to uh basically go back to all the way to 1913 if you want to get the whole chronology of all this i'm trying to help people see through the left right paradigm so yeah fine call me an effing liberal fine call me an effing you know conservative extremist you know whatever you want to call me but this is bigger than any one president anyone that thinks that one president come in here wave magic wand and fix things yeah you can do things to make things better in the short run you can enact a corporate tax cut while increasing spending at the same time. And of course, it's going to make um, the economy do better in the short run. It did it for George uh, W. Bush. I think it was 2003 or four. He came out with a big, uh, you know, uh, corporate tax cut where the money came in from offshore to buy back their own stock, which is what happened. Ask GE how well it worked out for them buying back their own stock instead of investing into the future. And this is just something that is a short term stimulus. I'm glad that he's in there. I worked very hard to get him in there. But to think that you're actually going to you know, keep the bubble going as opposed to saying, hey, this is a bubble. We need to stop it. It's absolutely insane. It shows you know, what an egomaniac he is. I'll probably end up voting for him still just because I, you know, I, I really think Hillary's probably going to run again. So you guys can, you know, mark that in your calendars for, uh, you know, a couple of years from now. Uh, but one thing, you know, I also want to, you know, before I get off this podcast, I got my kids coming home soon. We've got to do the, uh, the whole Santa thing. But, you know, I just released a Crypto Wealth Advisor edition of the podcast. So if you guys are into crypto, make sure you check that out. We also, uh, two months ago today, I released uh it was episode 36, and it was called uh, basically Tim's Contrarian Reasons Why He Thought the Stock Market Was Going to Go Down. That was two days before the stock market started declining. Uh, you know, also, you know, 37, 38, you know, all, you know, even 39, I'd say they're all great episodes. All of them, I think, are great. All of them, I think, are really, uh, you know, you know, evergreen for the most part. And, you know, and also, I mean, if you guys want to get... Uh, you know, want to do business with me, you can go to Tim at the Liberty advisor.com. You can schedule yourself in there. We have no setup fees. If you contact me before the end of the year, no setup fees on our self-directed IRAs where you can put crypto in there. I don't advise anybody puts all of their money into crypto. Obviously, uh, you don't actually have to get your money in by the end of the year. It's just, hey, if we have that initial conversation and we get the ball moving, I'll grandfather you in. Also, the rates for general wealth management are going up. Uh, the you know existing clients obviously are grandfathered into that. And people that have been with me for 10 years have been grandfathered through every step of the way. And uh, you know the rates right now are zero to 100,000. It's going to be go from zero to 250. So you know all along the spectrum, your odds are you're going to have a cheaper rate if you contact me before uh, the end of the month. Um, and and you know it's still be a good deal too in January right now. And so what we're doing is we're buying put options on our clients' accounts. We're, so we're using a small amount of their portfolio to then hedge against uh, the rest of the, their portfolio. So it's sort of like if you buy fire insurance and all of a sudden your house burns down, well, you know, you hope your house doesn't burn down and you piss away the insurance every year. But if your house does burn down, then we use a small amount of your um, of the premium basically to then build back your entire portfolio because some people how they want to manage this is they want to say hey let's you know keep things you know really really conservative let's go all in cash well what happens if the fed prints a bunch of money and all of a sudden boom one day the market's up five thousand points because we print you know a five trillion dollar bill to go you know pay everything off even though you can't pay it off because the money's based on debt to begin with that's a whole nother uh, subject that I, for a, a later date but you know a lot of people i think who mean well and are trying to protect themselves uh they're either going to go broke safely staying in cash or staying in these bonds 
uh, they're going to have they're going to have be exposed to interest rate risk. That means if you have uh, you know let's say a million dollars in bonds, your ten year bonds rates go up one percent, your million bucks is now nine hundred thousand dollars. Then when you start taking some of that money to then live off of, you probably have to dig into principal, which then increases your withdrawal rate risk and increases sequence of return risk. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then that's all the more reason to talk to me. So this has been a live taping of the Liberty Advisor podcast. Uh, I think I did an okay job without stumbling on this. But anyways, you guys can find us over on, uh, uh, if you go to libertyadvisor.com, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, iTunes, Google Play, Player FM, Stitcher, Podbean. And then we'll, we're looking to get uh, you know active on, on DTube uh, as well. And then trying to have some of these live streams on Twitch. I don't know uh, too many people that use that right now, but I'm trying to diversify away from Facebook because of all the shadow banning. But it's been... Uh, been real and now trying to uh, navigate all these different screens to figure out a way to get off of here. But uh, anyways, thank you for listening and talk to you guys later. Take care.